Hey everyone, Brandon Lee here with Virtualization How To, and today we're talking about one of the biggest shifts in how you can run containers inside of your Proxmox VE environment. With the release of Proxmox VE 9.1, we now have a completely new option for deploying containers that sits right alongside the existing Docker VM approach and native LXC containers approach. We're talking about full OCI image support. This is something home labbers have been asking for for some years now and now it has finally landed in Proxmox 9.1 as a first class feature. So today I'm going to walk you through the three different ways that you can run containers in Proxmox in late 2025. What changed in 9.1 and which one you should choose for your home lab or production environment. Before we compare the three container approaches, let's quickly recap what changed in Proxmox VE 9.1. If you didn't catch the full write-up of the 9.1 release, I'll have a link to that blog in the video description. But the big new feature for container users in this release is native OCI image support. In version 9.1, you now have a new button in your local template storage called Pull from OCI Registry. This lets you pull OCI compliant container images directly from registries like Docker Hub, GitHub Container Registry, and even private registries. Instead of needing a Docker VM just to run application containers, Proxmox can now pull, store, and run these OCI images directly on the Proxmox host, and it uses an LXC container behind the scenes, and that's one of the really cool features about this new capability, I think. This is not Docker running natively in Proxmox as we might have thought when we first read the headlines. Proxmox is still using LXC as the execution environment, but it's now able to use those OCI images without forcing you to convert anything manually as we would have had to do before the version 9.1 release. This brings a couple of huge advantages. First of all, you no longer need to spin up a dedicated virtual machine just to run simple Dockerized apps. Second, you don't have to deal with unsupported hacks to run Docker inside of an LXC container. Proxmox stance over the years has simply been it's not supported to run Docker inside of an LXC container. And third, because the OCI container becomes a Proxmox object, just like any other LXC, it can be snapshotted, backed up, replicated, and managed through your existing Proxmox storage system. Now, when you really stop and think about that, that is truly awesome. But this also comes with a few downsides. The new feature is still considered a technology preview, meaning it's not fully GA. And right now, there is no built-in approach to update those OCI containers once they are deployed. You can deploy them, but updates are still a bit unclear as to the best way forward to actually have those lifecycle tasks completed. It also doesn't replace Docker Compose workflows or advanced Docker networking features that you may be using today in your home lab. So while the new OCI support is incredibly promising, you still need to choose the right container method for the right workload. So let's walk through each approach, starting with the most common one, running Docker inside of a dedicated virtual machine. Even in late 2025, running Docker or Podman inside a virtual machine is still the most flexible and the most compatible way to run your containers in Proxmox. It's simple, you create a VM, you install something like Ubuntu Server or Debian, you install Docker, and then you simply pull your container images. And you can do that with Docker Compose stack files or manage those stacks using something like Portainer, Komodo, or even Kubernetes through something like K3S. Now, this method gives you full compatibility with every Docker or Kubernetes feature, including advanced networking like Mac VLAN, IP VLAN, overlay networks, uh, features like Docker Swarm, and using other things such as CNI plugins that you would use with something like K3S. Now, you can snapshot the VM, you can migrate it between nodes, you can back it up as a single unit, and you can treat it as your own portable environment. 
It's what almost everyone these days uses in production environments. And I think the downside, of course, is the overhead with this approach, especially if you have a very simple containerized application. Spinning up an entire virtual machine for that seems like overkill, and well, it is. Uh, you also have to maintain and patch that operating system. Uh, maintain the Docker engine that's running inside of the virtual machine. And you have many more layers to deal with between your hardware and your application. So it's just inherently less efficient, but it's still the most complete container runtime that you can run in Proxbox. And it's production ready for any use case that you need to run that workload for. Now, a Docker virtual machine is the right choice, hands down, if you run a bunch of containers. Uh, depend on Docker Compose very heavily, or you run complex self hosted stacks like Portainer, Traffic, Gitti with Gitti runners, GitLab with GitLab runners, Nextcloud, Plex, Fresh RSS, or Nginx Proxy Manager. Some of those are certainly able to be ran in different ways and simpler ways, but for the most part, if you have 10 to, I would say 30, 40 uh, container environments or full application stacks, Docker inside of a virtual machine is still the king of that configuration, especially for uh, production environments, but also production home lab services and applications that you may want to run. Now, let's talk about LXC containers. One of the best features that draws many to Proxmox as a platform is, since it's very early releases, it includes native LXC container support. If you've used other hypervisors like VMware, you know that running simple containers natively isn't really built in unless you go down the Tanzu route on VMware, which is extremely heavy. It's complicated. It requires a ton of infrastructure all kinds of requirements there. However, Proxmox LXCs, on the other hand, are almost as easy as creating a virtual machine. They're incredibly fast, they're lightweight, they share the Proxmox host kernel, and are very resource efficient, almost as fast as bare metal. You can snapshot them, you can back them up, you can migrate them, you can replicate them, but LXCs are OS level containers. They behave more like minimal virtual machines than application containers. Also, the long-standing downside is they are not compatible with most Docker images unless manually converted. Also, many apps require systemd, they require privileged operations or kernel modules that do not work easily inside of LXC without some workarounds or hacks. So while LXCs are amazing for lightweight services like PyHole, AdGuard Home, simple web services, scripts, they do not replace Docker for application containerization. They are, though, ideal for stateless or simple workloads where you want high performance and low overhead. Then we get to the new kit on the block, the OCI containers inside of Proxmox VE 9.1. We've already given kind of a high level overview of this new technology, but I think this one really fills a big gap between Docker virtual machines and LXC containers. Instead of converting Docker images to LXC templates or spinning up a full Docker VM, you can now pull fully OCI compliant images directly from Docker Hub or any other registry that is your favorite and run them immediately inside a Proxmox managed LXC container. That's awesome. This means you can deploy a Docker image without basically having Docker installed anywhere. Under the hood, Proxmox is doing some magic though, as it still is using LXC containers as the very minimal host required for these application images. But now it understands those OCI layers and stores them in its own storage system. So all you then have to do is attach the networks, the VLANs, the storage, CPU, memory configurations, just like you would any other LXC container. I think this is a game changer for quick deployments, single service applications, and very small microservices that you may want to spin up in the home lab, but it's really overkill to spin up an entire dedicated Docker virtual machine as a Docker host, or spin up an LXC container that basically the process would look like installing all of the components and the requirements on a full virtual machine. So this gives us that middle ground. And the advantages of OCI containers and Proxmox are many. 
You've got lower overhead than Docker virtual machines. No need to install Docker or Podman. You've got full compatibility with OCI images from Docker Hub. You've got integration with Proxmox snapshots, backups, and significantly reduced virtual machine sprawl. But again, I think it's still early on. You cannot run full Docker Compose stacks with this new solution. And you also, as mentioned before, you don't get the advanced Docker networking like Mac VLAN. And updating images is not officially supported yet. And it's not a Kubernetes replacement as there's not really an orchestrator built into this solution. However, I think we're seeing the writing on the wall when it comes to where Proxmox is headed. And they see this huge need to have simpler ways to run containers in production and other environments. So if you want to deploy something like Dozzle, Uptime Kuma, a single microservice, a lightweight dashboard, or a simple background worker, the new OCI support I think is perfect. Also, if you want to run uh, Portainer, Traffic, Authelia, databases with replicas, or multi-container applications, I would say stick with something like a Docker virtual machine, as that is going to be the right tool for some of these heavier applications or multi-tier applications that require running multiple containers. So to wrap it all together, Proxmox now offers three solid workflows depending on the type of container workload you want to run. Docker virtual machines are still the best for large stacks and full Docker compatibility. LXC containers are the best for lightweight OS level tasks with near bare metal performance. And the new OCI container support gives you a perfect middle ground for single image deployments without needing a full virtual machine or Docker runtime at all. In many home labs, you'll probably end up mixing all three together depending on the workload. So this isn't a one size fits all. This is simply a new tool that we have available. And that flexibility, I think, is what makes Proxmox VE 9.1 one of the most capable hypervisors for container workloads today. Well, let me know in the comments, have you tried the new OCI container features as of yet? Are you sticking with Docker VMs or LXEs for the time being? How do you see this impacting your home lab or your production setup? I'd love to hear your thoughts and the experimentation you've already done with this new OCI image support. Well, please do like and subscribe if you want to get notified of new content around home labs, Docker containers, Proxmox VE server, and many other technologies. Please do stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.